uh, thanks to Graham for the uh, um, speaking to me about speaking here at London and thanks to Dan uh, for the opportunity. Um, as you can see, yet yeah, they've been a senior developer at Make Do. Uh, Kim said that I'm good at this. I don't think I am, but you know, we'll see in about half an hour. <laughs> um, so the smart building themes with the EWP customizer API. Um, I don't want you to think that you have to be a theme developer to get something out of this talk, because you know I, I am. I, I, I make websites for WordPress every day. But if you're just uh, if you're a webmaster for your personal site or you're responsible for the site within your organisation. <laughs> You can still get something out of this, so I hope that uh, I hope we can uh, take something from this as well. So the goal is to make you feel less like this when it comes to the customizer, and just a little bit more like this, <laughs> a bit more confidence. Um, just to give you some context, I I've only been working with the customizer myself for probably 18 months. Um, I was using some of the other ways to add kind of options and settings into the themes and I eventually made the, you know, the jump myself. So in the beginning we had theme options. So this is the options framework. A uh, guy in America called Devin Price uh, made this. And it's just a framework you can drop into your theme to add this theme option. So as you can see there, uh, under the appearance menu, theme options. You then define multiple tabs and within those tabs, you know, these settings would appear. So any common snippets that would appear throughout the site, telephone number, address, email address, that kind of thing, you would you would store in here. Very friendly for, in my case, for clients. Um, but it's it, it's aged, and um, WordPress has decided to go down its own route in court. So we have the customizer API. So this is the typical uh, customizer screen. That's the default uh, 2015 theme there. So you have the actual control section down the left, and then the right panel you have the actual live preview. So just a brief uh, summary of, of the API. It's been around since WordPress 3.4, so that's June 2012. It's not brand new. It's not something that's still kind of bleeding edge. It's been around for a while. It's, it has matured over the last couple of years. No external dependencies. It is built into core. You don't have to drop something like the options framework into your theme. So. Right out of the box, you've got the support of the core team, it's being frequently patched. There's always some kind of update in a major um, <coughs> new WordPress release, so you've got that kind of stability and that peace of mind. It integrates with the existing WordPress settings API, so in terms of uh, you defining the settings and the settings actually being saved in the database, it hasn't gone and reinvented the wheel, it's leveraging something that's already in WordPress core. And for me, and from my experiences with clients, it gives them that instant feedback that they want when they're making changes. And it's the feedback that I've had from clients, both that may do in, in, in previous capacities, has been a fantastic way of giving them access to it. So it's, um, it is really, really good from that point of view. And it can be extended, which we'll touch on more towards the end of the talk, but the default options and controls that come in the customizer, you can build your own and, um, and offer additional options that are there out of the box. So let's get started. Uh, <laughs> preparing the theme. Step one, you need to create uh, a subfolder. So we have an example, basic child theme here. Uh, so you need a customizer.php file, put that in the <coughs> inc includes folder. Uh, then you have your usual um, your JavaScript folder, function.php, index.php, and a style.css. <coughs> Fairly basic, nothing particularly special there. Uh, step two, we're going to need to um, require this customizer partial. So all, all the customizer code we're going to add is going to go in that in that file, and then we're going to um, require that from within the functions.php. So depending on whether you're using a child or a parent theme, you would use either get style sheet directory or get template directory, and then add on the uh, path to the file. So. Now it's a case of using the customized register action hook. So everything that you do in terms of uh, defining new controls, any, any customized work now is going to be within a function that is ultimately hooked in to customize register. Um, in my case, I very rarely just use one function. I'll, I will break things up. So I'll tend to have a function that's just for any initial housekeeping, you know, removing things that are already there, changing some default settings, and then I'll have maybe a function <coughs> for each block of settings, just, just to save you from having this, this function that's never ending, 500 line function, 
And it's just easier on the eye just to break it down. And ultimately, all these functions, however you name them, are going to all be hooked in. So you know, the same ad action uh, to customize registers is going to be there. Um, with the WP customize object that's available, there's a number of methods which I've listed here, which we'll be using. Uh, for the most part, it will be the <coughs> methods. Um, if you have modifications to existing um, settings and panels and sections and controls, then you use the get methods. Uh, remove, you know, they're available. You won't use these as, as often, but uh, they are there for use. So here we go. Um, we're going to add a, a setting into the customizer. So we're accessing the uh, add setting method in the WP customize object. Uh, we're passing in the setting ID, so DTG underscore phone underscore number. And then we're passing in an ar array of um, you know, parameters uh, that, that we're going to set. So the type needs to be theme mod. Uh, theme mod is the, kind of the most common setting type that you'll use. You see in the comment there, there's an alternative. You can set that to option. Uh, I'll touch on that shortly. Uh, you can set a default value for this setting. So in this case, just put in a random uh, mobile number. Um, the capability. Uh, with WordPress, you have different capability levels. So in this case, manage options. You have to be an administrator. Um, so we're saying here that you can only um, <coughs> control this if you are uh, a, an administrator. Um, the transport um, parameter is set to refresh. This relates to the live preview panel on the right hand side of the customizer. So refresh will do a full refresh of the actual frame itself. Um, post message, I'll touch on that uh, shortly. That's a, a little bit better uh, and ultimately it's, it's what I recommend that you use, but refresh is, is the default for that. Uh, and then sanitize callback. Um, basic remember new data is, is, is pushed to this setting um, based on your input. You can run it through a function that will that will perform some kind of sanitization or validation on that. So in this case it's a mobile number. So we just create a quick function that you just pass in the data and then we're returning the clean variable which there's a regular expression there, and it's just saying basically all, all we want here are um, numbers and spaces. We're not interested in any, anything else. We just want this to be a, a, a telephone number. And just to touch on the setting types I talked about before, so theme mod, it's kind of the default, but kind of recommended way of doing things really. Um, the settings are only used by that specific theme, so all the settings get stored in a serialized array in an option in the database. If you set the setting type as option, um, any theme or plugin can use these settings. So, um, being a unique option in the database, that means you know if you if you change the theme, you're not going to lose all those settings that you've already saved. Um, it's useful. The context here really is if you are a plugin developer and you want to leverage some settings that might have been set in the theme, then you probably want to set your options using the option type because then the plugin could check, well, hey, is this one number set? If so, we'll use that as a fallback. We'll use one that we define in our own plugin. So I think nine times out of 10, you'll use the theme mod setting type, but option can be useful if it's, um, if it's something that you know, needs to work with a, with a plugin. So now that we've been threading a setting, we need to get into you know, the more visual side of it and the customizer. So first of all, we can add a section. So a section is just a container for what we call controls, and the controls are the actual the text fields, the drop downs, the various UI you know, elements that we interact with. Um, so in terms of adding the section, it's that WP underscore customize object that we're working with again. We're using the add section method. So we're going to give this section uh, an ID, give it a type, give it a description. Uh, the description will just appear uh, at the top of the section above any controls that are below it. Again, we've got the capability so we can control the visibility of these sections depending on what type of user is logged in. A lot of the time it will probably be admins, but that's completely up to you. Um, theme supports, it's, this is still relatively new. Um, theme supports basically means that if a theme support has um, or, or needs to be rather defined in the theme, an example, you might want something that's only visible if HTML5 support is added or if, if, if thumbnails is, uh, are added uh, as a support, you just simply add in uh, for example, it, it would be HTML5 that you'd add in there as, as the theme support. Um, so that's really useful. So you can you can check if if, if things are active in the in the theme and then show certain sections or controls based on that. Uh, the priority is just the, the visual priority, the order. So um, you, you can change the order. You might want a, a section to appear at the bottom rather than at the top. It's completely up to you um, how you alter that. And then 
um, panels. Panels are, uh, are kind of still relatively new. Uh, panels are sections for sections, really. So in the customizer, when you click on a section, it slides across and you then see the controls that are in that section. A panel, you click on that, that will slide over, and then all the various sections in that panel would slide in. So it's just a kind of nicer way of having um, lots of sections that are in a kind of a, a loose kind of category or theme all together in the same, the same panel. Uh, and adding a panel, a very, very similar um, syntax to adding a section, uh, title, description, capability, theme supports, and priority again. The, the same kind of uh, approach, accessing the WP customized object, using a method, <coughs> giving it an ID, and then passing in the, uh, the arguments. Very, very similar syntax across the board here. And adding a control, again, you can see it's very similar, it's slightly different in terms of how we uh, add it. We are using, in this case, the WP Customize Control class, which is just the default control. This covers things like input fields, text areas, that kind of thing. So we uh, create a new instance of, of, of that class. We pass in the customized object, uh, the DTG uh, phone number, that's the unique ID for this control that we're adding. Uh, you'll see that I've given the setting and the control the same ID. Um, to my knowledge, so far, there is no overlap. There, there's no reason why these would cause a clash. So, personally, just to make development easier, I give my controls and my settings the same ID because it, it, it just <coughs> makes your life a lot easier, especially when you're dealing with an awful lot of um, customizer code. It can just uh, speed things up. Uh, a new um, argument there you can pass in is uh, active callback. This controls the actual visibility of this control in the customizer. So, in this case, uh, is front page is a, a common WordPress function just to check are you on the front page of the site. So here we can say, okay, we only want this phone number control to be visible in the customizer if we are actually on the front page. So if we, if we load the customizer and then navigate to the About Us page, in this case that control will vanish because we're not on the home page anymore. So you can use existing WordPress functions here as this active callback, or you can write your own. If you've got your own function that determines some kind of you know, context for that to show, just pop the function name in there, excuse me, and, um, and, and that will handle that for you. <coughs> uh, a note, which is thanks to Mark actually, we were discussing this over dinner in Edinburgh last year, and he mentioned just from his own experiences, um, Panels are the kind of top level and sections are within them and then controls are within the sections. You can't add in panel and section settings and then you know, switch to your browser tab and then expect to see these sections in the customizer. There has to be a control living inside the section in order for that <coughs> section to, um, to appear. So it's kind of a bit of a rushing dog kind of thing around there. Um, you can add controls to existing sections. So uh, the section ID there, title tagline, if you look under the hood in the 2015 theme, title tagline is one of the, the kind of standard WordPress um, section IDs. So in this case, there's no need for us to create a new section for this intro text uh, control. I'm adding. We'll just leverage an existing section and add it in there, bingo. Uh, so in addition to the, the default WP customized control class that I said controls inputs and text areas, that kind of thing, there's a number of other options. So you have customized color control, that is a color picker. Upload control, just for, for uploading uh, media. Uh, customized image control, that is for uploading an image and then having a small image thumbnail preview uh, in the customizer. Uh, background image control and header image control. These are fairly standard in the core WordPress themes. Again, you, you 2015, 2016 have these by default, so you can control what the header image and the background image is going to be from within the customizer. Uh, two new ones, uh, customized cropped image control, you can define what image size that image then needs to be cropped to once you've uploaded it, so you can pass it, you know, 480 by 480, and the customizer will do that and ensure that the, 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 the media that's been added is, is just that set of dimensions. Uh, and then customized media control, and just, um, there's, there's a, a wider a variety of resource, um, of media types rather, that you can upload by the customizer, so more things like documents and rich media. So let's say you know, we've, we've registered some settings and now we need to actually retrieve that setting for use uh, on the front end. So uh, we'd use get theme mod. So in this case, we're just going to echo, uh, obviously, escaping the output, uh, as, as uh, Mark touched on earlier, make sure you're escaping all the things. So get theme mod, we've got a setting there called DTG underscore welcome, just a bit of welcome text on the home page, perhaps. We can echo that straight out. 
Um, we can also store the, the contents in a variable. Uh, get the mod accepts a, um, a second um, parameter there. You can actually provide your own default. Now, I said earlier that when you register a new setting, you can provide a, def a default there and then. However, this is quite useful if just a particular part of the site, you don't actually want that default setting to kick in, you just might want a, a slightly different snippet of text to appear, might be something in a photo or in a sidebar that just needs to be different on a certain page where you've got that control. And if, if there's no welcome text there, uh, in this case we can just say, say hello as a fallback. Uh, and a good point there, if you um, opted to use the option setting type instead of theme mod, again it might be something where you're you want to interact uh, between the theme and the plugin, then you use the get option function instead of get theme mod. So, same uh, same uh, same syntax there really for the you know for what you're escaping <coughs> for the variable, but just use a different function. So, in terms of adding a colour picker, here's a, an example of what we'd do in terms of the code. So, there we go. So we'll, uh, we'll add the colour picker um, setting in there. Call it. DTG, in this case a DTG title colour, we'll pass in the default, uh, the hex colour for black there, make sure it's an admin only, uh, we'll set the transport to post message, which is the, the, the faster and better way of facilitating the live preview, so fairly default settings there. We'll have the section, so we'll just call it section colour, again nothing special there, it's the arguments that we saw earlier, we'll put it in a panel, and we'll just assume the panel's already been created and then we'll just add in a control. So you can see there, as I touched on before, there's a variety of different classes for these different control types. So before we used um, WP uh, customized control to add a phone number field. Because this needs to be a color picker, it's WP customize color control. So it's just a different class that we're using. And then we'll pass in you know, some of the usual arguments, the label, the section it needs to reside in and then the, uh, the setting that this colour picker value is going, to be, is going to be stored in. And then at the end, it, within this function, we're just going to make sure that we're hooking into uh, to customise register, as you would for, for everybody to customise a code. And then after that, you've got to make sure that that's fine, you know, you, you, you're giving these options, these colour pickers, etc. But in the case of a colour picker in particular, there needs to be some CSS generated to make sure that that change you've made is actually reflected on the front end. So we're going to uh, hook into WP head. So here you go. Uh, hook into WP uh, head, so DTG customize CSS, just a, a nice straightforward function name. And then what we're doing is uh, we're creating an inline um, style block. And then we've got the selector there, site title uh, anchor. <coughs> so all we're saying is here, apply this color picker value that we've just defined in the customizer to that site title. So that is in 2015, that's the actual selector that you would use to change the colour of the, uh, the title of the theme. So ensure that you're hooking into WP head and that inline style will be added in the head for use in the page. And then we're also going to make sure that the live preview uh, is enabled and as, you, as you've already seen the use of post message, um, again, the default refresh value for transport is just, it's literally that right hand pane, the full thing is refreshed, it, you know, is an iframe after all, but you can you can facilitate that uh, through JavaScript to make it a smoother experience. So post message is an important uh, value there. So to be honest, don't bother with refresh as an option. Use post message for everything. Uh, it is a lot smoother experience. <coughs> so we need to add a little bit of JavaScript now to make make that line preview work for these um, these settings and controls. So create a customizer.js uh, JavaScript file uh, in your JS directory in your child theme. Uh, standard bit of, um, kind of boilerplate um, JavaScript there to make sure we can use uh, jQuery dollar. And then for every uh, control, um, and obviously that's, that's bound to a setting, we just add a, a JavaScript handler. So through localization in WordPress, the customized object is actually available to us in JavaScript. So basically here what we're saying is, should there be a change to the, the phone number, uh, we're binding that there's a function that's going to fire, we're going to pass in the new value that, we've, that we're typing in live, and then the phone number, here in this case, the, uh, the phone number uh, paragraph, this will be uh, the text value using jQuery.text method, we're just going to update the phone number in that, in that paragraph tag, so that's going to happen live as you type. 
Uh, again, another example, this is for the colour picker, so same again, we're passing in the, uh, the colour picker uh, ID and then we're binding that and there's a function that, that fires and then jQuery is going to uh, update the CSS um, attribute with the new value, so in this case it'll be a new hex colour, you know, red, yellow, pink, whatever it needs to be. So finally, now we've got this customizer.js file with our JavaScript that's going to facilitate the live preview of these nice <coughs> controls that we've added. Um, so we're going to do this the WordPress way, so WP and Q script. Uh, we give this JavaScript file a unique ID. We then use, in this case, we're using get stylesheet directory URI to get the path to the stylesheet uh, in, in our theme. And then we're just tagging on uh, you know, how we can uh, get to that file in our directory structure. Um, we need two dependencies there, so we need uh, jQuery and the WordPress's customized preview JavaScript to load before our script, otherwise it's just not going to do anything. Um, don't need to worry, worry about the version, so we can leave that, that at false, and then make sure that's set to true so that this runs in the footer, otherwise it's going to run in the head before everything else, um, or, you know, those dependencies have actually, have actually run. Um, and then when you're enqueuing this file, we're hooking it into customized preview init slightly different, but this will ensure that this, uh, this JavaScript is, um, is in queue properly. I mean, some people, you know, the old-fashioned way would just be to stick it in the footer manually, but let's at least do things the WordPress way and use the, the functions that are available to us. So, I gave this talk, the kind of full fat version of this talk, at WordCamp Manchester. So, this is, this is a video. So, that's a live example of that phone number <coughs> um, paragraph being updated, and then we're going to go and select a new color and voila, that's the site title updated. Um, yeah, that's that updated. <laughs> Here's one I made earlier, um, kind of a bit of a Mickey take of the work WordCamp Manchester website really, I just tried to quickly copy their look and feel as best as I could. So there's a little bit of work here, there's a little bit of customization I've done to add an image uploader. Um, I shamelessly nick their colours here. So if you do, if you want to Google the WordCamp Manchester 2015 site, you'll see this is a pretty dirty uh, copy of, of what their site looked like. This is an extreme case, you would never ever do this, but I'm updating all the headings and all the paragraph tags on the fly here. You would never do this. If you do, stop what you're doing immediately. <laughs> become a raging alcoholic and game over, just forget it really. Um, but it just shows you how powerful it is. A word of warning when you use lots of colour pickers in the customizer, it's very JavaScript heavy, so the performance can lag a little bit. Um, I'll touch on some improvements that might be coming to the customizer in the not too distant future in a moment. Um, quickly run through these now. Uh, making modifications, there are uh, the get methods that we can use, so any existing um, you know, settings, panel sections, or controls that are there, you can update their properties. So uh, we can change the default phone numbers to 999. Uh, we can change the description of this panel to stop panel time. Empty hammer reference, always good to get in. Uh, change the title of this particular setting to WordPress Rocks, which it does. So you, you, you can change things. It's not a case of if, if you inherit a theme from somebody else, it's not a case of you stop with what they've done. You can, you can manipulate that. Equally, we can remove items from the customized object. So 2015 adds uh, all five of those, actually. Um, apart from that panel, that's one that, that I've added, for example, but header image, background image, and all those background and sidebar color options are in there by default. You might not want these to be visible, so this is the housekeeping I spoke about earlier. I, um, I often remove these uh, when I'm working on any, any customizer projects because it just removes all the extra clutter. If they're not going to use them, don't show them because it just means there's less for them to worry about um, navigating. Quickly touch on custom setting types. If you have a design to store the customizer data in a completely separate database table, it might be for your plugin, it might be for some very uh, organization specific setup that you have, you might want to save the data and then tr trigger some other business logic that happens somewhere else, then you can just add the setting and just put your own custom type in. As a result, you can then actually use customize update custom type uh, action hook there to do your own thing with that new type that you've set. So as soon as the update happens, you can choose what happens in the live preview. Mm. And you can also, um, let me just go back there. Yeah, sorry, that was saving the data. Uh, this one <coughs> there will handle the actual live preview itself. So you have got control if you want custom setting types in the customizer. 
if you want to create custom controls, um, you just extend the class, so the WP Customize Control class here. Uh, we can just extend that, and instead of it being a text area field, we're actually using the WP Editor to make it a WYSIWYG field, so they can actually put various bits of formatting in. Uh, that's, that is quite useful. And you would just add that custom control the same way. So earlier, we used WP Customize Control up there where we did new, um, the new uh, instance of the class there. So we just put our new uh, class name in there for the new control that we've created. So it is extendable, very little work to do it, to be honest with you. Um, just a note, Graham had this issue literally 24 hours ago with the site. If you're a multi-site user, you have to disable option 4 in your network settings and the uh, domain mapping uh, sub-panel because what will happen here is if you're on a sub-site in multi-site, when you hit the live preview, was it a spinner that you got? Yeah, it's just, it never, you never actually get to yeah. see the page, it's just, just a little spinner. Controls, yeah. But the actual preview won't load because it's yeah. trying to pull the assets because of this redirect that it, it enables when you check that. It's trying to source the assets for the, for the live preview from the master site in your multi-site install, that's not that's not going to happen because it's a cross-domain problem which your browser will just go, oh, no, we don't like that. So to get around that issue, if your live preview is just a constant spinner, uncheck uh, option four there and save it and, well, in Graham's case, it works it's, it's, straight away, yeah. it's, it's verified on the support forums yeah. as a fix. So that's something just not a dirt to share with you in case you're a multi-site user. Just quickly to wrap up now then, mm. um, in the future, Customizer is being touted as a potential top-level link in the dashboard, which is how important the customizer is becoming in the overall you know, um, scheme of things. Better user experience for touch and mobile devices is underway. They're, they're penning this for 4.5 or 4.6 releases. Uh, there's a JavaScript overhaul already happening. Again, it's penned for a future release, but the problems with color pickers and that kind of thing, quite heavy JavaScript and customizer is going to get streamlined a lot for better CPU and memory uh, resource usage. There's a responsive preview which is being um, just heavily discussed at the minute for mobile and tablet views. So you as an administrator or any of your, uh, your sub-users that are logged in will be able to see how your site would look in a kind of a fake responsive um, kind of preview. I've got a, 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 an image I'll show you now actually of that. And there's plans for more robust administration with revisions and locking. So revisions in WordPress, you obviously have a snapshot of your content as it was at a certain period in, in, in the past. Um, revisions uh, for customizer settings could be a thing. So a snapshot of how your site settings were last Tuesday when you made an update might be available to you to roll back to. Uh, and also if there's multiple people in the customizer making changes, actual um, customizer locking so that two people can't be messing around with the same color picker on the site at the same time. That's also um, on the horizon. This is something, this is, this is literally was posted on the Make WordPress core block yesterday. It is not confirmed to go into the customizer, but there is a patch that's been heavily discussed. There's a bit of a war going on about whether this is needed in, in the customizer, but um, basically you would be able to use these icons in the bottom left of the, um, the control pane in the customizer to just quickly see I mean, those of you who are seasoned developers, um, you know, you use like Firefox developer tools or Google Chrome, you know you've got responsive preview in there. But yeah. this, is, this is something that may or may not be added. Um, personally, I think it's probably more useful for developers just to get that quick responsive preview while you're making changes. But hey, it could be, it could be of use to, to anybody, quite frankly. Just one more thing now. I've got to, I've got to finish up. Uh, always at Colombo, just one more thing. Uh, April 2015, the theme review team decided to enforce the use of customizer for theme options in any new themes. And originally, they gave a period of about six months where they give you a chance to kind of bin any other theme options or theme setting frameworks that you were bundling with your themes. It's now mandatory. Um, that said, they're not just going to go, oh, sorry, we're not going to help you. You know, you've got to go back and do it yourself. They will help you transition if, if there's. If there's things you need help on, they will definitely help you. Um, I, sp I spoke to Tammy on the, on the themes team several times, and she's made it very clear, um, personally and over Twitter, to people that they're not just going to abandon you if you're struggling to transition from an old options framework that you were using. So it shows how serious they are about the customizer, especially you know if the theme if the theme um, review process is now making the use of the customizer mandatory. So uh, that's something to bear in mind. Just finally, a couple of resources, uh, the WordPress Codex and the WordPress Theme Handbook. The Codex is older, uh, the Theme Handbook has more up-to-date content. You might find the Codex is your first read-through and the first experience with the customizer documentation a little bit easier. 
because the handbook needs a bit of a bit of a better layout, quite frankly. But there's a lot of information. There's a lot more up-to-date information in the handbook. Uh, Paul Underwood. Uh, he is a very prolific WordPress blogger. He's got some customizer controls that he's already pre-built. So when I said you can extend the customizer and make your own controls, things like a drop-down that have a list of all your pages already in it. Um, text areas that have a how many words you've got left to type in count. All this kind of custom stuff, you can literally download these from his GitHub re repo and just drop them into your project. I've done it on several client uh, projects and they do um, when it just hasn't been viable to spend the time or we haven't you know, charged to, to do all this extra work. We can just quickly drop these in. Devin Price has written a, uh, this is more for the developer crowd, he's written a customizer library to make doing lots of customizer stuff um, easier and quicker. Uh, Devin is the guy who authored the options framework that I was banging on about at the start that I fell in love with initially. So if Devin is moving towards writing code to help with customise it, that's a sign that we should be leaving a lot of these older frameworks behind. And that's it, I've tried to squeeze as much in as I can, so thank you very much for your time. customizer and that was a great talk and I really want to use it but for client sites I can't see too many use cases. I can see it really clearly for if you're developing a theme for public use or like a premium theme but from your from your experience what kind of content or options do you put into the customizer and what do you keep in the kind of back end as it were? It varies. I mean we um, I built a kind of a if you like a boilerplate for building WordPress sites that make do that we use all of our client projects called Kapow. And we we build in a few basics as standard that are in even before any, any discussion with the client. So things like your site logo, we can change it. Uh, telephone numbers, addresses, email addresses, your kind of header and the footer contact details are the most common. But we've 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 had projects lately where um, we had a client that kind of wanted um, kind of rows of configurable options on the front end that they could literally in the customizer yeah. pick all of the home page modules blocks. Yeah. So it, it depends how much how much customization they need. But some of the things that a lot of these site builder plugins offer, um, you might only need a, a tiny portion of what the plugin offers. You could build it with the customizer. You know, you could replace certain images. You could re replace entire blocks of content in different parts of the page. You know, you can essentially say, "There's a drop-down. How do you want your home page welcome welcome block to be aligned between it left, right, or centre?" You can give that control to the client. Yeah. So, as much as I've demonstrated using things like addresses and phone numbers and colour pickers, in theory, you could, you could you could really do anything with it. But um, that's why it's good that it is so extensible because you could just write a custom control that that lets you select what featured post is going to be on the home page. You know, the, the, the sky is the limit really, but yeah, I mean, I, I agree that it's probably, it's a heavier use within the theme development kind of marketplace and community, but um, we've, every client project we've done in the last probably six to nine months, there's been at least one or two sections that we've added in. And originally when I got onto this uh, three years ago, when I was using the options framework, the problem was that we were quoting for, for jobs for clients and then they might not be to take a support contract on with us. So, so you, we were handing over the code, thanks very much, we're here if, if you need us. Phone call two weeks later, needs to change the telephone number, we just had to change, or the email address has changed because we've changed our domain name. Okay, so I'll just I'll charge you for an hour rate, we'll go in, change that for you, that's fine. But now that you have the customizer, you give that control to the client. In, in our case, there's no need for them to pick up the phone and say, can you change this little snippet of text or change this, this image? So it really is what, what, what you make it, I suppose. But I think the customizer is very under-promoted, under I feel, within the overall WordPress kind of ecosystem. So I, I think it's worth having the discussion with your clients about what they need finite control over and then just take it from there. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much.